Hi everybody, Shelly here. So, thank you so much Verna for sending me this amazing portrait. I can't believe you're new to painting. So everybody, Verna painted her second portrait ever and she's trusting me to take a look at it and give her my thoughts and critique on this portrait. So I'm gonna do that here today and I'm gonna use Photoshop to kind of illustrate some of the edits and things that I may be recommending. I'm really just covering the basics here. I'm not going to get too in depth as far as some of the more advanced um, portrait painting ideas. But the main thing, Verna, remember, you're the master of your painting. You're in charge of how the final artwork looks. And I don't want you to ever think that there's only just one way to paint a portrait. And you will always be the one in charge of how your portraits look in the end. Okay, here is Verna's portrait. I'm assuming, Verna, that you were working from a photograph. You didn't let me know if you're working from life or not, but I think it's from a photograph. And what I see is the shadow is on this side, left side, and the light is coming in from above on the right. So that's your light source. Now, what this means is, this is a round form, the face, and as things go away from the light, they start to get darker. And some of the features on the face are going to cause a cast shadow, meaning feature of the face such as the nose can actually block light to certain parts of the face, like just underneath the nose, right above the mouth. That being said, what I see missing is there could be a darker shadow on this side of the nose. That's gonna give you a little bit more depth and create a little bit more of that 3D realistic illusion. Now let's remember that our light's coming from here. I'd also like to see a bit of cast shadow just here. Cast shadows are pretty dark, so that's gonna be as dark as at least this shadow here in the neck area. So the other thing, when you have light coming in from above on the side, it's gonna create what is considered a Rembrandt type lighting which we want, it's ideal. It really helps to push the effect of the 3D look of the face. So what that gives you is this little triangle of light here on this far cheek, and pretty much the rest of the face on the shadow side will be in shadow. Now, this underneath part of the neck, this is cast shadow, so that's gonna be really dark, which it is, so that's good. So let's take a look at where the shadow should be. We need to see more shadow in this area. I'm gonna darken that up. Now, also, the eye sockets sunken into the head a little bit. I wanna see some more shadow in this area. And the shadow, I can see you've got a little bit of it here coming down and around the face. So all of this area is going to need to be a little bit darker. And your shadow colors are uh, usually a reddish color, a little warmth, and your lighter colors are gonna be a little cooler. And it seems like you've got that going on here, so just stick with that. Okay, the other thing is the eye on the right here, it's going to be missing a little bit of light because if it's the light sitting here remember this is sunken in and especially on men the brow line is protruding outward so it's going to create a little bit darker effect here in the eye not as dark as the shadow side over here but definitely more dark than what I'm seeing the other thing for it is there's three zones to the face so imagine the light is coming from above the forehead is receiving the majority of light. It's gonna be the lightest area in your portrait, and it's also gonna have a little bit of a yellowish tint going on because it's closest to the light source. That brings us to the second zone, which is the middle, and that's gonna be pinker. And this is because the nose and the cheeks tend to have um, blood vessels that run closer to the surface, and we can tend to see a redder, tone in the face in that area. 
And then the third zone down here, the lower part of the face, it's furthest from the light, rolling underneath a little bit. So it's going to have a grayer or a greenish cast, especially on men. If, if they're having a little bit of um, whiskers or beard show, then you definitely want to get a little less saturation in this area and paint it with a greenish gray tinge. Now on women, I tend to go towards the purple uh, spectrum. Now, Verna, you said you wanted to be a little bit more painterly, which I love that. That's how I like to do portraits as well. So what I would like to see is a bit more broken color. So let me explain and I'll uh, demonstrate what that looks like. So you wanna let some of the background pull into the shadow side of the hair here. And you can just break up that hairline a little bit there. You can even do it a little bit with the ear. It's just slight. I like that you have the ear in shadow. Good job with that. And then you can also, when you're painting the hair, same thing, you're just letting that line be more messed up. Not so perfect. You can even do that with the clothes. Just let that background kind of pull in a little bit to break up some of those perfect lines. So there we have some broken edges. To so have a more painterly effect, you don't want to have all the edges in your painting be 100% crisp. So it's good, Verna, that you know you want to have a more painterly style. So with that in mind, you just let your brush marks lay down and stay. Don't blend them. Just keep laying brush strokes down either beside one another or slightly overlapping. If you put a brush stroke down you don't like, you can go back over it with the correct color or, the, or a different value depending on what you're not liking about the initial brush stroke. Now Verna, I love how you didn't paint the whites of the eyes too bright. I'd like to see this left eye, though even the whites of the eye get a little bit darker. And on the teeth, I feel like you want a little bit light because remember, these are inside the mouth. They are not getting hit by the light. And typically, you get a little bit of lip color reflecting onto the teeth just underneath that upper lip. So let's put a little bit of that in. I'm gonna use a little bit grayer color. I think that's gonna be good. So there, we've taken down that teeth color a little bit. I like the way you did the glasses. Got some nice highlights on there. There's probably gonna be a little bit of a shadow, but it's okay if you leave that out. You can choose. Since you are the master of your painting, you have the choice. Paint the shadow in or leave the shadow out. That's perfectly fine. I like your uh, chin doesn't have too hard of an edge rolling away from the light here. You have good transition. What you can do just to further that transition along a little bit. Let's grab, I want a nice warm skin color. So somewhere about there. So you would just transition with a little bit more warmth before you hit the shadow. And that's going to help increase the shadow on this nose. Let's go ahead and do that. So we'll get some more shadow in here. There's gonna be more shadow underneath this left eye. A little bit more coming onto that cheek here. So we're looking at that as if we had the Rembrandt lighting happening. Now there's usually a little bit of a shadow here underneath that lip. And this part of the nose is going to be in shadow. Darken that up a little bit. A little bit darker. And get this cast shadow in. Remember your shadows, even your hard cast shadows, 
need to be warm. Paint them with a warm, dark color. Bringing that cast shadow down a little bit into that neck just to pull up the 3D effect. This ear got a little bit cool. Keep your shadow colors all in the same color family. And I'm just punching up the shadow here on the side of the nose to further along that Rembrandt lighting. You did a good job with painting the nostrils. You didn't put them too dark. A lot of times students will put those very dark. You did great. That's not um, something you want to have. You don't want the darkest part of the um, face to be the nostrils. And they're always painted pretty warm. So you did a good job with that. We're going to add a little bit in here because this eye is also just hidden a little bit from the light because of the way that the forehead protrudes out over that eye. Now you've got this pretty bright highlight here on the cheek. So if this is going to stay this bright, then we would need to brighten up the forehead. So you have the option to darken this highlight on the left cheek or lighten the forehead. I tend to lean towards darkening this cheek area. So let's grab this cheek color and just bring it down a little bit. I'm gonna keep it a little bit uh, more saturated as well since it is in that shadow side. So we're just gonna darken that guy up a little bit. There we go. So that's better. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this highlight color here. And you see how it's in the orange family. We're going to pull this down and get it a little bit redder. That'll do. Because the three zones of the face tell us that there should be a little bit more redness in the cheek and nose area. So I'm just gonna add a little red here and get a little bit darker here. And we can put some more saturated red right across this nose here. There we go. We talked about the three zones of the face and then the lower part of the face here. I'd like to see a little bit more gray in it, so let's do a orangey warm gray. Yeah, that ought to do it. So it's kind of like just you want to, maybe that's a bit much, indicate that this is away from the lights, more of mid tone color. Not really too pink, not too yellow, just a greener, grayer color. And I do feel like I want to get a little bit more highlight up here. So let's take this a little bit into the yellowish world and we'll pop a highlight right about here. Go a little bit lighter, subtly adding that highlight there. And the other thing we could do is put a little highlight on the nose. So remember the light's coming from this side and above, so there's our little highlight. So that's some of the basics of Verna that I would suggest for improving your portrait. So here's where we were, here's where we went. It's very subtle, the changes, but I think it's taking you in the direction that you had described you wanted to go towards being a more painterly portrait in style. So if you wanted to have even more drama in your portrait, then you want to have some more lost edges and to do that I would suggest putting a shadow in this left area so let's do that now 
So you're going to have what they call a lost edge from letting the values of the hair and the background be similar. So when you do that, it lets your face pop forward a little bit. And then what you wanna do, you wanna go in then and just add a little bit of a highlight on this side of the hair. You also, Verna, you did a good job of not having too hard of a line where the forehead goes into the hair. That you definitely wanna have broken edges where the hairline meets the forehead. I like this little edge here on the right side of the forehead being a bit sharper since it's so much in the light. And there you have a little more drama added with the darker background. Now here it is with the more dramatic background and without. Of course I would paint the background a little nicer. This is um, done on Photoshop with my Wacom tablet and <laughs> I am much better with an actual paintbrush and oil paint, but hopefully you get the idea. So I've got some really cool videos that you can check out that explain the Rembrandt lighting and how you can see and use that in portraits. Also, I have a video about working from photos and taking your own photos and making sure that when you're painting portraits, the last thing you want to do, especially when you're just beginning, is work from a bad photo. So in that video explains to you what makes up a good photo and what makes up a bad photo. Thank you so much, Verna. I really appreciate the opportunity to go through this critique of your portrait. You did an amazing job. If you guys have any questions about painting portraits, if there's something in the videos that I'll be making in the future that you'd like to see that I haven't already covered, please let me know. And until the next time, happy painting.